Hey guys, so I decided to make a video on the topic called Limber Tail Syndrome. So there's a lot of different names for what, what it's called. Um, it's cold water tail, it could be limb tail, or even swimmer tail. So this is actually pretty common in athletic dogs. Any dogs that do a lot of swimming or hunting activities, um, basically what it is, it's like your dog overuses your tail and then causes them to have like a sprain in their tail. A couple days ago, I took my dog swimming, and she's not really an athletic dog, and she hasn't really gone swimming a lot, so I took her, and later that day, um, she was in a lot of pain. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. I couldn't tell if it was her leg or her um, her ribs or anything like that, but then I found out that it was her tail. So she had too much exercise in her tail, and that caused her to have a sprain. So I guess any home remedies is basically what you're going to want to do um, is have your dog like rest a lot. So the key thing is basically resting. You want them to sleep. Um, so that will help with like the healing process of that tail. Um, you can also um, have your dog have a heating pad on the base of the tail where the inflammation's at. A lot of people recommend people to go to the vet to get anti-inflammatory medication. Um, I gave my dog baby aspirin. You don't want to do that a lot because it's bad for like their stomach and their liver. Um, but that just basically took the edge off the pain for her because at the time when she was going through this, she's, just, she's still going through it right now. She's healing as we speak, but um, it was Sunday. The vets were closed and everything, and there was no place that was open. So I had to deal with <laughs> like her going through this pain in the middle of the night. Um, but basically you want them to do is just to rest. I mean, it's very common with athletic dogs. Um, but sure, I have a dog and I didn't know anything about it until I looked it up and there's not really many videos by it. Um, I mean, I guess the common things with seeing that your dog has that problem is that their tail, usually like my dog's tail will perk right up. She'll get excited. She'll wiggle her tail and everything, but, um, she didn't. Her tail was completely like flat. It was kind of tucked under her legs. Um, she couldn't wiggle it or sit on it. And every time she did, she would yelp and she would cry. And, um, yeah. So, I mean, there's not really much to do. The vets are going to send you home and tell you that your dog needs a lot to rest. And that's, it could take up to three days all the way up to two weeks, depending on how severe the, um, the injury of the dog's tail is. But, yep, you want them to rest and they are my dog's making improvements right now her tail was really bad and now she's able to lift her tail up just a little bit but i mean you don't want them to do a lot of activities so the only reason you should bring them outside or anything like that is if they have to use the bathroom but otherwise try not to get your dog excited or anything like that because that can cause the tail to become inflamed again so just rest 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 that's like the key thing about um with this type of syndrome with your dog's tail so Yep. Good luck, guys. Hopefully this doesn't happen to your guys' dog because it is a pain and it sucks. As a, a pet parent, you don't want your dog to suffer or any animal to suffer. So, But she's getting through it. She's doing better. And I don't know any other recommendations on how to deal with this stuff besides just rest, put a heating pad on the base of the tail, and any anti-inflammatory medication will help too. But good luck, guys.